hello, this is Peter Combs from Bitemout.com and P.O. Combs Asian Art in Gloucester, Massachusetts. And today is Friday the 13th, December 13th, 2019. So be careful today. And uh, this is our weekly video. We'll take a look at see how things went on eBay, what happened over on Catawiki, what we've been up to lately, all the usual stuff. It's been sort of an interesting week. And we're going to get into some things. The first few pieces are, I'm going to be a little critical of a couple of things because they, they were copies that ended up uh, that sold for or are selling for a lot of money and I'm going to go through uh, what's going on over there and hopefully if you got if you bought one of these or are thinking of buying them you'll change your mind and if you bought one I'm going to tell you don't pay for it it's a copy but anyway let's get started just in case some of you have noticed the home page has been acting a little funny lately because we've been going through some redesigns on it because of the the site integrations we've been going through and um, uh, and right now, if you come to it, it looks like this. It's pretty. We've we've simplified it a bit. Most of the content is all still there. We just organized it better, I think. And uh, you'll notice on the right side, uh, the the global auction page sign up, sign in or sign up are, are going to be the two options, and that will become active uh, next week sometime. Uh, we're still uh, working away at some things, trying to stabilize the site. And uh, you'll notice that it's loading faster. We made some changes uh, on how things are handled so that you won't be uh, waiting around too much. Okay, now let's take a look. This was uh, last week's uh, newsletter page. There were some nice things on there. There was this nice Japanese samurai knife that did pretty well. We'll get into that. Very nice Wan Lee. This was one of the bargains of the week, that big Wan Lee charger and so on. And then there's another piece, this Swato charger, which went for $1,000. We'll get into that. All right, before we, before we wade into everything, I want to touch base on, a, on three or four pieces that are uh, very concerning to me. One of them is this one. It is up currently. It has a chin lung mark on it. It's a copper red uh, vase, obviously. And uh, it's up to $10,000 and it closes in five hours. So a lot of you are going to see this after it closes. If you end up, buy, end up being the winning bidder on this, uh, it is not a Markin period vase. It is a copy of one. And I hopped over to Christie's and pulled up a real one because I want to show you a few areas, a few aspects of the vase that are wrong. And uh, we'll flip it over and here's a picture of the bottom of it, which is the quickest way to tell. Uh, you notice the shape of the foot, the way this foot is shaped out. And you'll notice over here on the second character mark on the right side, this thing right here. The way that's formed, it looks like a T within a box. Okay, they, they didn't begin really marking vases like this during the Chin Lung period. There are one or two very rare examples that are floating around, but not with that that V, that, this funny shaped foot rim. And um, generally, there's just a single stroke in this box. And uh, we'll take a look at the Christie's example that we've got lined up to compare to. Remember the shape of this foot rim and remember this mark. All right, and we'll hop over here. Here's here's the vase. First thing, you'll notice that the shape, this is the Yuhu Chuping, um, or pear-shaped vase. Uh, notice the uh, the shape of the vase. And when we pull this up, we're going to expand this. Let's bring it way in so we can really see it. There it is. First thing you're going to notice is the foot rim. The foot rim is rounded, okay? It has a much rounder shape to it. And the wall inside the foot rim is quite vertical. It goes right down. And if you look over at this one, it tends to taper in a bit. It's got too much of a taper in this area here. Okay. The next issue is the shape of the is is again the shape of the foot. It's got that 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 nice soft amber yellow color. This vase was originally sold by Marchance many years ago and went into a collection. And here is the mark. And there's that that character mark with that single stroke in it. All right. That's what it should look like. All right. I don't think the vase, this vase is a brand new one, though. I don't think this is brand new. I think it was probably made in the Republic period, early 20th century, something like that. Uh, the, the, the fittings on it, uh, one of the tells is, is the, uh, the fittings on this piece. Uh, this is an old, fairly old lamp fitting. It was probably done in the 1940s or 50s or something, and I suspect the vase wasn't made long before that. This vase is up to, uh, like as I said, $10,000. So be very, very careful with it. In perfect condition, these vases, are, if they're period, are worth a lot. And that's probably why everybody's getting so excited about it. Uh, it, it and the, and the, co the tone of the copper red seems a bit funny to me as well. All right. And now over to these. This is a pair of vases. And I think this is an innocent mistake. It's not the seller's fault, really, I don't think. Um, he's got these listed as Yongchen period vases. Uh, these are not Yongchen. These are Samson. All right, and they close in eight days. They're up to $44. I think a lot of people are going to get excited about these. These are Samson, and they have Samson marks on them. 
All right, if you don't know a Samson mark, they're, they're right there. These red marks off center, they look almost Japanese in style. It's the way Samson did them. But these are, these are, 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 are not the right feet. And uh, if you know uh, enameling or you've watched our videos on enamels and how they should be shaded, you'll see that this blue enamel and the way the reds are done is just not right. And um, the shape isn't too bad, really. But the uh, enameling and outlining and stuff just doesn't hold up. So uh, if you've got those on your radar, uh, take them off, unless you like Samson. If you want to buy a nice piece, pair of Samson vases from the latter part of the 19th century, these are pretty good. But they're not Chinese, okay? And this happens a lot. Now we're going to hop over to this. This, this vase is uh, sold by the same person that has the uh, it's, uh, forever legacy. And, and they, they occasionally get real things, but they often have a lot of copies. This vase, they have, they've listed it as 19th century sky blue glaze okay, vase. And this is in the form of often the, the same form that you see in peach bloom vases. This vase is a 20th century vase, late 19th, early 20th century. In this case, the seller has at, described it properly. All right, and I think people are getting a little too excited about this. They're getting out over their skis on it. All right, here's the box that it came in. The box was probably about the same age as the vase, okay? And if you uh, close it up, it's got eight days to go. It's up to $1,125. Uh, don't bid on this as though you think it's an 18th century vase. It is not. It is a 20th century vase. They made a lot of them in both red and sky blue, okay? I don't think it's a 19th century vase either. They didn't really make these in the 19th century, but they made a lot of them in the early 20th. All right, because the, the, these uh, scholars' desk vases uh, were all the rage uh, with collectors. All right, and now on to this. This, this sold for $7,870, and it was listed. Uh, uh, all it said was Qing Dynasty uh, Chinese blue and white vase with mark. Okay, um, This is a, a very late vase. Okay, it is not a Kung Shi vase. He says Ming or Qing Dynasty. If it's Qing, it's very, very late Qing, and I'm not even sure of that. Okay, and what I did was I found the original. This is a, one of the Red Cliffs, uh, based on the Red Cliffs uh, poem, and here's an original. This one's in the Metropolitan Museum of Art, and I've, 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 I've pulled the pictures and done some side-by-sides. All right, the one on the left is the one in the Metropolitan Museum, and the one on the right is the one that was on eBay, okay? And clearly, they're, they're quite different when you really take a good look at them. The pattern is a well-known one. Um, this this uh, Red Cliffs poem pattern, it's, it's known as, it's based on a Han Dynasty story, and the poem was written about the, the middle of the la second half of the 11th century, and uh, it, made, it made the story and the poem very famous, and it ended up being depicted in a lot of artwork on porcelain, on scrolls, and so forth. And you'll notice the scenes are, are stylistically, or, 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 or component-wise, fairly similar. Pagoda at the top, the wall, and all that. But you'll notice that the, uh, the boatman, for example, is scaled quite differently. The people on the cliffs are positioned quite differently. Uh, and the, the way that the, the treatment on the, on the uh, eBay example, the way the grasses are done down the side is not consistent with how the real ones are typically done. I looked at several of these just to be, just to be absolutely certain. And the tonality of the blue is just off on it okay and here's here's a here's a close-up of it it's a little bit blurry because of the quality of the jpegs on both it isn't that they don't enlarge that well but uh there's that and then we can hop over here to the uh, other image here it is and this is the second pair of uh, pictures and you'll notice there this the the composition have the same basic elements but you'll see that the, the, the shading of the cobalt over here is kind of muddy looking. It doesn't have this sort of gradient style to it. The, the way the pine tree sort of gnarls itself off the, off of the, uh, out of the cliffs over the rocks. The rocks are very carefully outlined. The, the tree itself is beautifully outlined and gently shaded in from light to dark. And up here it's just sort of like dabs of, of dark blue. It's just sort of muddy. All right, and the differences are fairly striking once you really look at it. And you can tell that the, the copy, the reproductions that were done in the late 19th and 20th century were done intentionally to come as close as they could. All right, this one has an old staple repair in it. Uh, the staple shape looks about right on those uh, for the period, for the Republic period or a little earlier. So this, this is not a, uh, a, an 18th century vase, 
but a very late Republican or late late Qing to mid Republican period base probably, and uh, I would uh, not bid on it accordingly. <laughs> I would not. I mean, I would bid on it accordingly, not uh, treat it like a kung shi thing. The other thing I wanted to mention was it's sort of interesting about these is that one of the things that they got wrong that should jump out after, if you've seen a few of these is the shape of the vase itself, the taper. And you'll notice how wide the shoulders are up here, nice and wide. And then you see how wide they are here. And you notice this almost goes straight down. All right. It tapers in slightly, but the taper on these, these slab constructed square vases should be more, a bit more uh, exaggerated like this one. You notice it comes in quite a bit from the shoulder to the foot, and then across, shoulder to the foot, so forth, okay? And the bottoms of these, um, on, on the real ones, can either have feet with a, a, a glazed base and a, a, a rain mark on it, or have no rain mark. And it can also be flat with a small recessed panel in the bottom. All right, this one, the copy that's here, has, the, has, a, has a flat, unglazed foot with a square recessed glazed uh, bottom with a rain mark in it, okay? But this vase is uh, not a, a, a Kang Shi example, and uh, hopefully uh, it won't uh, sting anybody uh, too badly. Okay, so I hope they, I hope whoever bought it isn't one of you guys. All right, if you did buy it, I hope you haven't paid for it because it needs to go back. All right, if you bought it as Kang Shi. Okay, now uh, over to uh, this. This was that nifty little um, turquoise glaze Kang Shi vase that I, I pointed out last week. I love the color of these vases. And this is a Kang Shi one for, by all indications, but it's been trimmed down. It was cut down to make a lamp out of it. This one had a flared mouth on it that came out like this and then flared out over here like a trumpet form. And uh, as a result, because it's cut, it still did pretty well, but it brought $839. If this vase was complete and in perfect condition, it would have brought two or 3000 all right? But it's still a wonderful lamp. Make a great table lamp. All right, and then over to this. This Islamic market pair of Kong Shi dishes. Very, very pretty dish. The guy had two pairs of these up. I'm only going to show you one of them. Uh, they were co quite unusual and, and, and good looking. And they ended up selling for $330. Um, this was a Hans 3962 had these. And uh, they, were, they were quite nice. He's a seller over in the Netherlands. He knows what he's doing. And uh, then on to this, the flambe glazed vase. I thought this was just very, very pretty. All right, a nice old vase. Uh, let's see if this, the slides work on this. There it is. And it's got the ram's head handles on the side. You've all seen the form before. They did them in monochromes. They did them in this flambe glaze. Here it is again. This was a nice vase. This was a really, really nice vase. And it has those nice little crackles that you see on the, on the, on the head because this contracted, this, these contract when they're fired and causes a, a few extra crackles to appear. Here's the top of it. There's the inside of the mouth all gooey and running down inside. Here's a picture of the bottom. Good looking base on it. Here's the foot rim. All right, there was a little overrun. You can see where they, they, they sort of pushed it back, ground it back just a little bit. But notice the eyes in the glaze, these nice little dots. This is a good looking pot. And um, it ended up selling for $3,152. All right, and this was either an 18th or early, I think either an 18th or early 19th century example. It was not marked. I think this was a very nice buy, whoever got it. And the size was fairly good too. It was uh, 12 inches tall, it was a foot tall. So it wasn't a little vase. Some, they made vases in this style that were a, a, a bit smaller. Uh, but this was a nice size one. And then over here to the Wanli uh, Charger. This was a pretty one. It had good color, classic design with the with the double birds in the center, and then they had the the uh, the, the, the you know the the, the fronds, uh, the you know the leaves on the rims and flowers coming up and so forth. And uh, it did pretty well. It brought six hundred and fifty-seven dollars. But I think it was a good buy because it is a Charger. It was thirty-six centimeters in diameter, or roughly thirty-four, thirty-five inches. Nice looking thing. And then over here, this was one of the good little buys of the week. This was a nice little, it wasn't very big, five, six inches square, something like that, but Famil Rose, mid 19th century, and uh, has these uh, figures. Uh, uh, one of them, he's, he's standing, it looks like he's, he's on the, uh, the three-legged toad here with cash symbols on the side. It's got some, story, it's got some storytelling going on. The two kids are sitting here with the baskets of fish and a lady at her table and then a, 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 some sort of a, a, a Buddhist here. And uh, look at this. This thing only went for $55. You know, I've said it a million times. Leave a bid. Leave a bid on things. This was a, a very good buy. 
And now over to this one. This was that little turquoise glazed biscuit uh, example that I put in last week that I talked about. Just a nice thing, 19th century, but beautifully glazed. I love the pooling effect down here all through the bottom. Very nicely done. And uh, it did it did fine at the end. It brought uh, $388, but it was a nice, genuine example and very well done. And then on to this one, the pair of uh, ivory vases. These are early 20th century ivory uh, uh, covered jars. You're not supposed to sell ivory on eBay, but Lord knows they sell a lot of it over in the, in the EU and the UK. And this was a good looking pair of uh, jars. If, you, if you've been collecting for all, you've seen these before. They were very popular, uh, in, especially in the 1920s for export. People loved to bring these back. And um, they did pretty well. They brought $1,225. Ivory does not get a lot of competition, typically from buyers in the U.S., because there's a high chance it'll be interdicted coming in through customs. And you lose it, and you may get a fine. All right. In the EU, it seems to be a little looser. And uh, ditto for the uh, uh, Chinese lady here with her, with her scrolls, with her hair all done up, wearing sort of her fancy robes and uh, this one brought the same price twelve hundred and twenty five dollars again for one of them uh, it was nicely done and as you can tell it was a good size one judging by the hand it was probably a foot or so tall good looking piece of ivory and uh, then on to this this was the we featured this this last week this was actually an inquiry uh, we had through the uh, identification uh, assistant thing uh, somebody sent this in and they were wondering what we thought of it and they'd done a lot of research on it already they'd looked up they, they, uh, or afterwards, they looked up who the maker was and all that. But I told them I thought this was a pretty dandy piece of work. I thought it might have been Meiji period. It turns out it's actually late Edo, a little bit before, a little bit before the Meiji period. Uh, but the style, the style, of course, continued right through the end of the Meiji period. But during the late Edo, they did some work like this. And um, there it is. And it brought $1,555. All right, a perfectly good price for that. Uh, nice thing, nice thing. Didn't have a scabbard. It was just it was just the the knife and and with its handle. Here it is. All right, if you didn't look at it, but beautiful workmanship. Original blade. Blade is signed. All the stuff you want to see on these. Fifteen fifty. And now let's hop over to this. This was the uh, guglet, the Chinese uh, Kung Shi Amari guglet. And um, I mentioned last week that the, there were two of these almost identical uh, that were on here about a, about a month ago. One of them had damage. It was sold separately from the one that was perfect. And the perfect one sold for 1600 The one that had a considerable amount of damage sold for around five or 600 And uh, this one had a small bit of damage. This would really help you home in on the prices on these things. Um, it had a small bit of damage up here, uh, an old repair right here, small chip out of it. That was it. That wasn't. That's not that much. And um, as long as it didn't have a hairline associated with that chip, that's a pretty easy repair to make. And this brought a thousand seventy-five dollars. Okay. And uh, now over to here. This was a nice buy for the week. This was an early Qinlong or late Yongchen period uh, dish with the, with the deer in the center. Nice. The, those thick. Uh, Famille Rose red enamels and so forth. Uh, nice looking plate. I thought this was fine. And uh, it went very reasonably. $101. That was it. All right. I might have had a nick or something on the rim, it was, but it, it wasn't anything significant. This was sold by a seller in Dorset. And uh, that was a perfectly, perfectly reasonable price. A bit on the low side. Uh, if you collect these uh, landscape animal plates, that was a good one. And then over here for this, the uh, the footed uh, 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 ewer or tankard, um, it's probably missing its uh, cover. The seller mentioned that in the listing. Here's a picture of the bottom of it. It's an 18th century example. Um, here's that. All right. Uh, some will think this might be Ming. I don't think it is. I think it's 18th century. But at um, any rate, it went very reasonably. This was a good little buy. This was about seven inch, eight inches tall. It only went for three hundred and five dollars. Okay. I think that was a decent buy. And then over here for this, the big vase, this big, very colorful, late 19th, early 20th century vase with the yellow handles, but uh, nice, nice uh, enameling on it. And these big pots are very popular. People love these, especially if they're in pairs. But the singles do pretty well, too. But pairs of these ring a lot. But notice the decoration, the maidens on this are very nicely done. 
They're beautifully done. Very organized painting, good color separations and all that stuff. And uh, it ended up doing pretty well. It brought $1,952. But this was a big one. This was a, a 61 centimeters. So it was over 24 inches, over two feet tall. But, uh, but the colors and decoration were, were nice and clear on it. And that's important. And, um, and then on to uh, this. This was another nifty little buy for the week. This little sort of like an opium tray. Uh, but it had the cr nice blue uh, cracked ice pattern running around the rim here with little bits of red in it. And then these flowers and spaced out nicely in these shower marks. And uh, here's a picture of the bottom, just the way it should look, flat, unglazed. Nicely trimmed, though, unusually well trimmed. Often those are a little bit gritty. And uh, here's a side shot of it. And uh, look at this, $59, okay, that was a good buy. As I say it again, leave a bid. This was sold by Arthur Potts, he gets good things. When you see things from Arthur and, the, and Pud, and there's a number of them out there, Ching period, uh, so forth, you can, you can be pretty confident that the piece has been checked out. All right, and then on to this, the dragon uh, uh, silk uh, apron, uh, beautifully done. It looks like it's been remounted, obviously, into a new background, um, but it's, it's nicely done. The needlework on this was quite good. If you, if, you, if you stopped to look at it, pulled it in. Here's a good shot of the needlework. Nice, tight patterning, good shading. Uh, doesn't look like it has a lot of surface wear to it. Here's a, here's a picture of the wave pattern at the bottom. There's another shot of the dragon, nicely outlined, five claws. The claws are well done, What good to definition in the claws. And uh, it did fine. It brought $800 at the end, all right, which is a perfectly good price uh, for a piece that's been, you know, it was, this was trimmed and then remounted with a new back. All right, and then over here to the fluorite lamp. Some people call these quartz. I always call them fluorite because I'm, that's what they used to call them in the 1970s, I guess. So anyway, th but this was a nice lamp. These were put together and shipped to the West very often between uh, 1915, 1920, and the 19 early 1940s or late 1930s. And uh, they made these, these fancy brass mounts for them and uh, you know, put carnelian and different types of stones in here. They incorporated a wooden base and then a copper repousé bottom, so forth. And these are quite nice, and they look wonderful lit. If you, if you, I like, I like putting Chinese stuff to use in my house, uh, old jars made into lamps, things like this. And these are very pretty lit. Uh, if you get a good shade for it, they're worth having. They're, you know, they're a heck of a lot nicer than 99% of the lamps you can buy in a store these days. You might as well get these. These are great. For, you know, do, do all your lighting with Chinese things that have been re repurposed. All right, this went for $256, a very reasonable price. And uh, how big was the uh, the body? Uh, the, the jar, the the, uh, the 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 stone part of it is was 10 inches tall. The overall height was 22. That's a good table uh, table height. And just get yourself a nice lampshade. Uh, we found a place online recently. We bought we replaced four or five shades in our own house just because they'd gotten old. And uh, we found some great ones uh, for around 50 bucks a piece. So there you go. All right now. Let's uh, mosey on over to the next one. Was this? This was the watch keep, the uh, uh, Yongshen uh, watch keep that was missing its cover. I still thought it was very nice and you know worth collecting because the it's a rare form. You don't see these very often. You see them in museums. They always seem to have these at the like the Peabody Museum in Salem or the or the MFA in Boston probably has one. <clears throat> but this is a nice one. And uh, in the end, even without its lid, it still did pretty well. It brought five hundred and sixty-eight dollars. All right. With its lid, it probably would have brought up around two thousand. All right. Now on to this. This was our, our friend Tony over Scrap Dixon over in France had this. This was a nice little portable opium set. Very attractive. Had a good box with nice hardware on it. Late nineteenth, eh, early twentieth century. It's hard to tell. Here, here are the uh, accessories that went into it for, for working your drugs out. There's your lamp. All right. And there it is. It all fits neat and tidy. You can head off to a party with it. Anyway, it did pretty well. It brought fifteen hundred and eighty dollars. Uh, opium accoutrements and opium lamps and things like that, especially Pak Tong ones and ones of very good quality, are highly collectible. All right, very very collectible, and uh, some of them are extremely fine. So if you find them, you know they're worth learning about because uh, the the collectors of this stuff are fairly aggressive. All right, and then over here was that little uh, that little gee type crackle glazed uh, uh, pen holder brush holder, and in the end this did it was a 19th century one, about 355 dollars, which is absolutely fine. Nice little thing though, good honest scholar's object. And then over here, the uh, Famille Rose uh, uh, export dish from the mid 19th century with the. Uh, 
figures seated around tables and so forth. There are some scholars here and some ladies and children on the side and there's some, you know, uh, uh, bowls and accoutrements and so forth. This was a nice little plate. I like this. There you go. There's a better view of it. Uh, scrolls in a, in a box. And it's always interesting to see what they incorporate into these scenes. All right, this fellow's got a scroll out on the table, and they're discussing it the way they would. And a uh, little boy over here's got a bowl of something. And uh, this uh, ended up selling for $355, all right, because it's sort of an unusual pattern, an unusual rim, and it was quite well done. I liked it. And then over here, the export teapot. This was an unusual teapot because it had vertical molded ribbing on it and then colored in. And then it has this sort of a, almost like a Vitruvian scroll running around the rim up top. But a nice little teapot. Here's a picture of the bottom of it. It's a picture of the lid. Nicely done. So the gilding was in pretty good shape all the way around. But the ribbing on it was unusual. And it ended up going for just $187, which I think is pretty reasonable. I thought it was a very fair price. It almost looked at a glance like one of the English ones. And that may... Maybe pe people thought it was. They did English copies of these, but I, I, this didn't look like that to me. And then over here to the paintings, there was a set of uh, three of these paintings that were up. They all seemed to be by the same artist. They all looked like they were by the same painter. Nicely done, good detail, late 19th century. Here's a picture of all of them. And they sold, and they did varying prices. This one brought $522. This one of the uh, of the immortal looking up at the smoke coming out of the double gourd vase brought three hundred and sixty dollars. That's sort of an interesting story. And then this one of two immortals sitting under an old uh, pine tree or old uh, you know uh, leafless tree, uh, looking at scrolls and uh, talking. And this one did the best. This one brought eight hundred and ninety eight dollars. And then over to the fan painting of the of the uh, of the maiden. I liked this. This was a delicate, uh, lovely little painting. If you if you stop to look at it, the the pen work on it is simple. It's elegant. The proportions were nice. The the positioning of the head was good. The sort of relaxed uh, shape of the arms. Nice bit of script on it and so forth. And I uh, had a bit of interest. It ended up selling for seven hundred and eighty-seven dollars. And the but these these fans uh, the, the were often taken off the sticks or painted as. To, to appear like fans, but never were actually put on a fan. They were they were mounted, put in albums. And then over here to the 18, 17th uh, 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 century uh, Wukai uh, decorated Dragon Ball. This was a nice one, transitional period. I thought this was quite nice. Here's the interior of it, sort of a little bit spottled up, little stuff in the uh, glaze. Here's the bottom, very typical of these, a bit rough on the inside. Uh, and so forth. I've noticed one thing on the fakes. You notice there's a little tiny dab of glaze here in the middle, which happens sometimes when they were, these were being handled before they were fired and some glaze would get under there. I notice the fakers now, especially the Yuan and Ming pieces, early Ming pieces, are adding glaze to the bottom to give this effect. So be very, very careful. All right, glaze on the bottom does not always mean it's old. Uh, when the rest of it looks like this, okay, and you see the, the way these this, this deep dark blue and all the colors look okay, um, uh, a splash of uh, glaze on the bottom is not unusual, but it is not an indication of authenticity. It's just a sort of more of a confirmation that the piece is okay. This did pretty well. It brought $2,630. It was a nice thing. This was a seller in Virginia, in the United States, had that. Hope he got it at a yard sale for $3 and sold it. <laughs> All right. And then on to this, the mid-18th century uh, Famille Rose uh, uh, dish, probably Chin Long period. Uh, they did some of these in the Yong Chen period. Sometimes they, they call these, um, they're similar to the, what they call, what was the DeWitt Clinton service or something. It was a, a famous dinner service, uh, uh, governor of New York or something. At any rate, they had a similar pattern. This isn't really the same pattern, but pretty close. And uh, this went very reasonably, I think, $127 for a nice plate. It was about nine inches in diameter. It wasn't a great big one, but nicely painted, all right? Seems to me these export plates, the Chin Lung period, that are quite well done. Uh, there's some real opportunities nowadays to buy some of these, I think, for very reasonable prices. Uh, if, if, you, if you enjoy fine 18th century enameling, uh, this is the stuff to buy right now. It really is. And uh, then on to this. This was that big Swato charger that was on uh, Catawiki. I love this thing. It had the, this, this sort of checkerboard with X's in it around the rim. Great big piece, grungy backed, 
All right. These are not big sellers uh, among Chinese collectors in the mainland China um, because they're sort of grungy and so forth on the back. That's what the back of these look like. So you can buy them fairly reasonably. Um, this one went for $1,000, but it was 47 centimeters in diameter. So it was uh, roughly, uh, you know, 18 inches wide. Nice thing. And then on to this was the uh, little uh, Wan Li uh, guglet or, or bottle, rather. Uh, there it is. With the, with had, the, had the horses on the outside of it. This is a pretty little vase. This is a good vase. If you like late Wan Li stuff, this was nice. And it went for $832. Very reasonable. Perfectly reasonable. Bottom of it looked nice. The foot room was nice, nice and neatly trimmed. You can see actually see the knife marks around the bottom when they cleaned it up. And uh, the bottom is neatly glazed. And I suspect if you got under here and really looked, you'd see a good iron oxide line running. You can see some of it down in here. But at any rate, it was a nice thing. And it went for $832. And that's not bad. That's not unreasonable at all. All right. Now, let's hop over and see what's coming up. All right. One of the things that's coming up is this. This, this double-handled, these nice chimeras on the side of it. They're sort of attenuated and long. Uh, 1780s export uh, garniture vase. But it's sort of an unusual form, obviously made for the European market. And uh, it's got eight days to go, and it has no bids yet. So you want to check. That'll be on the Catawiki section on the newsletter page uh, when you come over this week. And they also have this up. I like this. I love the birds on this. The little late Ming uh, bowl. The bowl rim is slightly misshapen, but I like the vine pattern around the inside of it. And I love the birds, and I like the shading of the cobalt. All right, there you can see it. There is a nifty little bulb in the, bulge in the, in the, in the rim, but it doesn't bother me. I kind of like that. All right, and uh, here's another look at it with the bamboo and flowers. It's a nicely decorated bowl. They might have screwed up the shaping of it a little bit, but they sure made up for it with a good decoration. I'll always go with the good decoration. And it's up to 11 I guess everybody else likes it too. It's up to $1,120, and it closes on Sunday. But check it out if you like it. I, I happen to like that a lot. I think that's a nice bowl. And then there's this, the terrine. Um, I'm not sure. I think this might have been up. A few weeks ago on here, it seems familiar, or the guy had it on eBay. I don't know where I've seen it before, but I've seen it before. But I like it a lot anyway. It's a nice European market, uh, uh, European form uh, food terrine. Probably came in a huge service, uh, but beautifully decorated. Nicely done and uh, nice handles on it. It's a good-looking thing. Good cobalt decoration. I like the birds on it, okay, and the, you know, the way they look down and around and swooping. And all this and this is just started as well it has no bids we'll see where that goes should do pretty well and then coming up on ebay um uh, uh ceramics and collectibles the, the shangri-la folks over in the netherlands have this nice looking plate up this pattern you'll find on you could collect this pattern you could spend your life collecting it because it appears on on, on, on small cups, it appears on small garniture sets, it appears on little vases, it appears on bowls, plates. Uh, I saw some chargers a guy had in the Midwest uh, about a year ago, and they were these were big. They were about 17 inches each, and they had the same pattern on them. Unfortunately, the, bowl, the pieces had been badly damaged and stapled, so I wasn't that interested in them, but I loved the pattern. All right, and then over here to this, a 19th century uh, uh, bronze uh, table rate of a, of a chimera coiled up. Nice little table weight. This is a seller over in the UK. That just it's got about four days to go. Uh, it's up to uh, twenty-two dollars. It'll probably you know add on a few hundred to that. And then there's this nice dragon rondelle. This to me looks dirty. Okay, if you if you end up buying this, uh, talk to maybe talk to a really good textile conservator and see if they couldn't clean this for you, uh, because I think this would might clean up beautifully and it'll make the colors pop out and make it look very very nice. Do not do it yourself, because you will destroy it. I guarantee you. All right, but at any rate, it's up to five hundred and ten dollars and it needs a little cleaning. Okay. And then over here to this, this is a nice terrain, uh, very unusual type of uh, Chinese export terrain, but good looking. Uh, has these mass candles on the end. They don't turn up very often. They turn up, they, these have turned up in the Portuguese market and the French market and northern European market more than uh, around here, that's for sure. 
Not a lot of 18th century. 18th century export porcelain didn't come to the United States the way it did to Europe. Most of our big export stuff out of China came in around 1800, so it was sort of toward at the tail end of all this. But at any rate, this went for 600, this is up to $610 already, and it's got nine days to go, because I think this will probably bring four or 5,000, three to 5,000. Anyway, they're pretty rare. You can look them up. Christie's has sold these in the past. All right, and then over here to this grisaille decorated terrine. This is a really unusual terrine. If you buy Chinese export porcelain, look at the last terrine and then look at this terrine. Either one of them is a good buy. All right, but grisaille decorated, fully grisaille decorated terrines are quite unusual. They did use a little bit of colored enameling on the faces, which they, they, they often did. Uh, here's a picture of the interior of it. Here, here's some more of it. This is quite unusual. It's a nice thing, okay? There it is. It's got some, uh, Nick's got a tiny hairline. Nobody cares. There's another shot of it at the bottom. Very faint, but the good orange peel on this, late 18th, early 19th century. It's up to $265. It's got five days to go. This is Night Heron in New Mexico has this. And that's a good looking terrine, unusual. And then there's this also, this uh, Ming Dynasty uh, uh, incense burner, but it's a good one. I had the repair, there's a repair to the foot on this, all right, which you need to know about. It's been sort of reattached or rebuilt. But that's a heck of a nice lid. God, that's a beautiful cover on this. Nice old stand. The stands and covers were added later, uh, but, but a good looking piece of uh, 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 Ming, and, uh, or a Ming planter rather, not an incense burner, excuse me. There's the foot where it's been broken right here. But the, the other feet look okay to me, okay? And uh, this is up to uh, just has one bid, $100, six days to go. I don't know the seller. Is Spanky? I Spanky? Like Spanky and our gang, I guess? I don't know. At any rate, he's out in, uh, uh, he's in Hawaii. Uh, Aloha, if you're watching this from there. And um, that's a nice piece. It's a good-looking um, um, uh, pl uh, uh, plant stand. You buy it, put a nice little potsai in it or something. Okay. And then here is another nice export bowl. This is one of those unusual ones that was meant to go in a stand, you know, on a night table, a wash basin for your face. And the exterior of it is, is mostly undecorated. The inside of it is profusely decorated with this very well-known pattern, the, the, these diaper devices and then these Rococo cartouches with Chinese figures. Here you have somebody with a, with a, with a bird or falcon or something. But the outside of it, you'll see, is, is basically undecorated because it wasn't meant to be seen. It was meant to fit into a stand so they didn't bother decorating them. And uh, it's up to $110, four days to go. It's a, very good, it's a very good buy if you can get it for under five or $600. That's a nice, nice bowl, nice pattern, and they display beautifully. And then over to, excuse me, over to this one. This is one of the more unusual plates I've seen this week. I like this. This has the uh, uh, the silk balls, silk ball pattern all through it. It's a mid, first half of the 19th century plate, judging by the enamels, or to, uh, maybe to the mid 19th century, but I don't think after. This is an old plate. And I love the green ground with the uh, with the repeat patterns on it. And I love these, these uh, silk balls, all the different patterns in them and so forth. It's a nice plate. There's the back of it. You see some kiln grit that, that sort of flipped over, inverted V-shaped foot. That's always good to see uh, if you're trying to date these and you're not sure if it's 20th century or 19th. Well, if it has this foot on it, it's nearly always 19th century. And you see the same feet, foot rims on uh, rose mandarin and rose medallion and rose canton plates and, and other plates that were made as well. But the, the, the border pattern on this is really nice. And you have these citron finger cartouches done like citron hands uh, filled with, with flowers and so forth. And, and they even used a uh, diaper pattern and gilt on some of the silk balls. This is quite a nice plate. It's up to $133. If you like unusual patterns, get this, because I don't think I've seen this pattern before on a plate. I've seen them on bowls, but I've never seen it on a plate like this. And uh, it's, it's quite unusual. And this is a seller in, the, in Portsmouth over in the UK came up with this. Nice thing. And then this. This is going to be in the newsletter, but heads up on it. It's not a Yong Chen Famille Rose uh, 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 scroll pot or anything like that. This is a later 19th century example, but it's beautifully done. And it is, uh, he put, bother putting the dimensions in, it's about, a f about nine inches high and a foot wide. It is not a brush pot. It's actually a small planter. But um, there it is. 
All right, and if you scroll through it, you can see the bottom. And the minute you see that bottom, you know it's not an early 18th century base. That's a pretty clear 19th century one. But the decoration on it is really good. But don't bid on it as though it's a Yong Chen example, because I do not believe it to be one. All right, I just don't. I just don't. I don't like it for that period. And uh, it's up to $59, so I suspect uh, maybe no, nobody else thinks it's Yong Chen as well. But it's a nice planter. And if you can buy it for, you know, under four or $500, it's a very nice thing to own. All right. And uh, I think that's it for the week. All right. We come back here to the, yeah, that's the last one. All right. Uh, I'm sorry this video went on a little bit longer than usual because there was a lot to talk about. But uh, I hope you enjoyed it. And uh, if you liked it, give us a thumbs up here. Subscribe to us. You get the, hit the notification bell and we'll tell you when we haven't, you'll be told when another video comes up. We do one at least once a week. Sometimes we do a couple in a week. And uh, come over to bidamount.com, join, join the forum, uh, check out the site, what we have to, to share with you on things we found on the internet that are for sale, and uh, so on and so forth. All right. Have a great weekend, and uh, get your Christmas shopping done. All righty. Bye-bye.